Guess who's back in the mother house? So y'all, yeah. Um, this is my one of my favorite items in my closet right now. This is from Vintage Drivals. Excuse me, let me stand up for you. It's reversed, but it says Vintage Drivals. And on this is a bleached image of Whoopi Goldberg. The Brownless Legend and credits. Thank you, Rich Rocket, for your art. This thing is so soft, and it means more to me than just the color of the orange. Resembling sunshine and energy and vibrance that I would love to have in my life and the softness in which it exudes itself. But <sighs> I've needed this um, as someone who struggles maintaining warmth. Um, potentially due to my low body fat percentage, but also my metabolism and other conditions. But that's not relevant to what is about to be spoken of right now. So I just did that five hour stream, but I still need to talk a little bit while I do other processing at the same time. It helps. Um, when I first returned to skating, it's been about six to seven months now i returned to skating uh june 2021 um officially and i say officially because i think in 2018 maybe i bought a cheap pair of rotor blade brand um inline skates and these were men's i believe cetra blade skates i don't know why i just did it to me these were Z the Zetra blade, um, and I believe I had the red and black. I'm not saying anything about the quality of the skate, but let's be honest. There's not a lot you're going to get out of it if you are actually a skater. I'm sorry, but I mean, actually, I mean, you really have an affinity for it. That skate ruined my affinity for skating. And not just the skate itself, but the materials, the quality of it, the construction, the design, the... Everything about the escape ticked me off. I can go and pull it out the sunroom right now, but I don't I don't want to touch them. <laughs> I don't find that important right now either. Because you can Google what I said. Z-E-T-R-A blade. Zetra Blade by Rollerblade brand. Now there are some people who have the soft boots from Rollerblade brand and other companies and they love those case. And they enjoy themselves and they don't feel afflicted in any way by the performance of the skate and they themselves do not believe that there's anything else they, they desire from the performance of their rollerblades. However, I'm not that kind of person. I prefer quality, anywhere from mid, upper mid to just below top shelf. That sounds fancy um, and fancy is expensive. And one thing I don't like to do is throw my money around I don't like to throw any money around, even if it's not my money. I don't like to throw it around. And I especially do not like to do it in ignorance. I made that $70 skate purchase in ignorance. You know, I thought about when I was a kid, the skates that I got worked for me for a long time, basically until I outgrew them. You know, I was scraping the plastic off them. I was busting them left and right. Um, they had a plastic buckle. Um, they laced up. And this was my childhood skate for about two years, I believe, two, three years. And in a short period of time where I struggled to learn to quad skate, I had excelled in inline skating and rollerblading. So I, I just never turned to quad, quad skating. It does not fulfill my soul in any way to strap on some quads. I mean, it literally does nothing for me, not even in the aesthetic. I appreciate it on other people, though. But for me, I don't think that's the look <laughs> because of the performance and the functionality of four wheels, sort of like this versus blades. Um, so having that understanding, I know that I like to be agile. I don't like to feel clunky in my skates. Uh, a lot of quad setups that are easily accessible on the market, similar to the Zetra Blade, uh, are not quality skates. And a part of the reason why learning about quads do not resonate with me is because I don't care for the style of skating that is typical of quads. And that is 
Not my style. I, and I also prefer more than roller rink skating. I am aware that quad skaters are also on the streets. I skate with quad skaters on the street. Um, I just found that I didn't have any interest in learning how to do that. <laughs> the wheels are small. I barely like skating, rollerblading, inline skating on 40, I'm sorry, on four by 80 millimeter skates. And when I returned to rollerblading, that's what I returned with. I returned with uh, the USD Aeons, Universal Design, the, the Aeon uh, line of aggressive skates. They came out with the 80 millimeter um, aggressive skate slash uh, recreational skate hybrid. This is a, a, a plastic body, unibody, you know, it's a single body skate that has the frame connected to the plastic body. So you cannot change them. It is not detachable. Um, it has four by 80 millimeter setup while also still maintaining space for an H block, a place to grind and has really wide sole plates. And I thought, okay, those are really good features, especially as someone new to aggressive skating. I don't want a whole lot of config, you know, movable parts right now. I wish I had just waited because there's nothing wrong with waiting on some of your desires and uh, better inform yourself and saving money so that you can make a better purchase with a, be a more informed decision. Um, I chose the lesser of my options, similarly to how I did when I chose the Zetra brand skate, going, oh, well, it's cheap, and it'll help me get back into it. It made it worse. It made it very dreadful for me. So I returned to skating with the USD Aeon 80 millimeter skates, all black, uh, recall liner. You know, you can take out the liner, you can take out look to, uh, the laces, maybe change some buckles, and that's about it. So once I realized the downfall of having a skate that is not changeable as someone who's older and likes a lot of different types of activities, right, within skating, and different disciplines of uh, rollerblading, I said, uh, I need a skate that can remove the frames. Um, and I can put different setups on the skate and experiment while I figure out what it is I actually want to do. But maybe I really just want to experiment with skating and that's what I want to do. Maybe I don't want to rely on one modality or one discipline within roller, roller uh, inline skating. And I know, however, I do not want to be limited to rinks. So I did some research and I found a Facebook group for inline skaters uh, in my area. And I've been very happy to have done so. Um, it's a community that I'm glad to get into, especially with all the diversity of the people who do skate and the practices they have in their lives. Like some of the people that skate are on a Brussels skate setup and they're skating with small wheels. Um, some of them are on 125 millimeter wheels. Um, and when I started to see that there were a variety of types of setups one could have, I said, well, let me look more into inline skating as a, a whole, as an industry. And I started to look at in on my side of the world and, and with the available materials that I can order at a, a decent cost, who are the top producers and leaders? Who's leading in the industry? Who's leading in competitions? Who's leading in fanaticism, uh, in loyalty? You know, like people who often enjoy their trucks will buy the same truck for their children because of the greatness of the functionality and the indestructibility of it, you know? So people who tend to Pur make purchases for utility, please like this video, subscribe, hit the not notification bell. People who tend to purchase, make big bill purchases for the promise of its utility and use, they tend to also ensure that other people get the same satisfaction around them. And I found that amongst Power Slide brand, uh, a lot of skaters at various levels uh, had invested in the Power Slide brand. And I even found that amongst their soft boots, it was, it was uh, slightly better quality and expectation. Um, so I'm not saying Power Slide is the best, however, according to my desires and what I enjoy, Power Slide was the choice for me. So I started looking around on the internet and Googling and specifically going to Reddit. Um, I've used Reddit in the past, but I had never had an account. But in 2021, I had to get an account specifically for the skating community. So <clears throat> I actually was looking again because I really like my three by 110 millimeter setup. But what I don't like is that I don't get the acceleration that I like. So I don't get the feeling of thrashing when I skate. Like when I skate, I like to feel like I'm engaged with the activity. So I like some dynamism, but I don't like the wheels to be so small that every bump and 
pothole and gap in the road that I hit, I'm at risk of hurting my knees and taking an impact or hurting myself by falling. Because the the once the wheel, the movement of the wheel is impeded, stops, momentum goes over. So investing in the 110 millimeters was important to me because baby, my knees hurt. I, I like skating, but I'm not putting myself in that type of pain. Um, there's a difference between developing resilience and just literally harming yourself. And I felt like with every bump I hit on the Aeon 80, um, I was just literally just, I felt like Triple H and the rock put my leg in a goddamn chair and stomped it. <laughs> so I said, I need to look around some more, but also I knew that the Aeon 80s wouldn't be my last stop. I understood that it was just going to be one of the stops as I gained momentum. So I continued to do research. And even now, like I said, I have a three by one ten setup that I, I, I really like. I like the Trinity setup. I like the size of the wheels. I like the quality of the wheels. I like the rebounding of it. I like the sliding of it, uh, the grippiness of it. However, one thing I have not enjoyed about the three by one ten setup on my power slide next boots, <clears throat> aside from the boot itself having some complications um, and the fact that it is a plastic skate. And I've since invested in a carbon boot is on the way. Um, one of the issues that I found with the three by one ten is, like I said, it's not feeling like I have the ability to thrash. I can't be aggressive. Like I'm a semi-aggressive skater. I don't do like rails and grinding and stuff like that yet. However, I do like to do, you know, I like to jump. I like to spin. I like to have some fun. I don't want to just skate in a straight line. I'm not just dancing. I dance when I skate. Um, and I almost never don't dance when I skate. So I'm not a speed skater. Um, I don't skate just to be cute and I support people who do. I don't skate to seek a thrill every time, right? Like I said, I'm not doing gaps and jumps and I'm not at skate parks. I am primarily in an urban setting or a suburban setting. So roads are rough, you know, you, there's a lot of unpredictability of the pavement. I like that. If I go on a trail, I can go farther and I can see places and things. And if I take like maybe a camera or some small device with me, I can photograph a lot of things and I can have a lot of time and space for thought without having to worry about maintaining the safety of my items when I'm not participating in the, the act, such as a bicycle. So I was reading a Reddit post and you can actually search it, Reddit. Reddit is three by 110 really faster than four by 80. And I think it was a really good, interesting thread. Um, and people were saying, repeating some of the sentiments that I had, I had like, you know, I, I love the three one ten, but you do miss out on the acceleration of a four by whatever setup. Um, and so now I'm really looking into investing in a four by 90 um, setup. And I, I think because of the person I am, I'm never going to be truly satisfied with any setup. I'm going to be happy, but I'm always going to be like, mm, I wonder. You know, because I always want to do something different and learn something more or see something new. You know, I want to practice new things. I want to take what I learned here and put it there. Take what I learned there and put it here. You know, I want to do three wheels, four wheels, two wheels, SUV, off-road wheels. You know, I want to I want to ice skate. You know, I want to do speed ice skate. I want to figure skate. I want to, you know, sort of touch on a lot of different disciplines and practices. Just, just you know, just out of the curiosity that I have for everything. Um. So someone says here, three one tens are definitely faster than four eighties. There's always trade-offs for different setups. Personally, if I'm going to do a long trip on our trail here in Washington, I'll use my three one twenty fives. Four eighties end up wearing me out way quicker. If I'm going around on the city streets up and down stairs, I use four by eighty four wheels. I generally only use my 80, 80 millimeter wheels at the skate park. I have. Power Slide Mega Cruiser 125s and Razor Cosmo 125 frame. And when it's all said and done, the power slides are faster. The 125 setup. Uh, generally, yes, 110s are going to be faster over any significant distance. The power you put into your stride really lasts longer on a bigger wheel, and they maintain speed more easily over rough terrain. Um, I didn't get the 4x100 because I felt like it was too close to 80. Um, and 125 is just too large, and I felt that they would, it would be cumbersome and tiring. That when you try to accelerate, you don't accelerate. You know, you have to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Now, you will maintain speed without trying, and that's why they call it the cruiser. The 125 is a super cruiser because you will be cruising as you skate compared to everyone who's pushing, pushing, pushing to maintain their proximity to you and see your location. Um, 
given that they are of a similar fitness level. Some people can skate hard as shit on aggressive wheel skate uh, uh, setups. Aggressive skaters are different types of people, okay? They're a different breed. We are not the same. That's a compliment, baby. Y'all different. I didn't even know that there were people who had never done anything but aggressive skating. And like I said, when I started, I was a baby. I'm like seven, eight, eight, nine, ten years old during my young years. And I didn't skate again seriously until as an adult. I skated a little bit in my teenage years on cheap products in skating rings. Where I didn't learn. I didn't grow. I didn't expand. I literally had one session on these cheap products and put them away. Never did it again. So, yes, I took offense. And people go, oh, no, you skated. You were skating before. No, baby. Just because you saw me in one video at one time. And some cheap ass skates that I never strap on my feet again. That don't count, baby. Because if that's the case, then baby, when I used to have money, we just gonna say I'm still rich then. Because I used to have money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's not how it works. Um, so I I took a, I took some time out to do some more research. And I really encourage anybody and everybody to take time to do that. And to know what demographic you fall into once you observe the crowd, right? Me, knowing I'm not necessarily near enough skate parks to invest in a skate park type setup. And to commit to that, it doesn't make sense for me to only have aggressive skates. It makes sense that I invest in a bigger wheel setup and I give myself the ability to be more free to get to the places that do have good pavement. <laughs> and I invested in the system that, you know, is lightweight enough. And it's, I could literally get to a place and change the frame, change the wheels, and still use the same boot. I really appreciate that. With this Zetra blade, this, 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 um, an expensive skate, which for a lot of people might be, they might be offended if somebody says something because, like, this is their first time getting into it or back into it. Don't use your emotions talking to me on that subject because my feelings hurt by skating on that skate. <laughs> That skate hurt my feelings. It, it gave it, it made me think I was just failed at rollerblading. And then I remembered quality, baby. You pay what you pay for what you got. So that little $70 you spent, you getting $70 worth of fun. Yeah, I'm sorry. In America, that the, the cost of enjoyment can run you a nice pretty bill, a pretty penny. So $300 of fun is better to me than $70 of pain and sadness and slowness and sluggishness and putting your foot down to, to, to get a power transfer and you can't because the skate is slipping. It doesn't have any power in it. Ain't any mother game ever power. I only know what the skate is actually made for. I don't know whom it actually benefits. I know that there are people who like to skate, but I've yet met anyone who was an avid skater in their youth was a skater in their adulthood, and they said, I like this shit. I have yet to see it. I've seen people who have not experienced other types of skates defend these, you know, soft boot, rollerblades, extra blade, you know, entry level. I'm not even going to call it entry level cheap. I'm not even going to call it. I'm not going to give it the integrity of that. I'm not going to give this any respect. I'm sorry. That's not even about being a material snob about because oh, some people can't access, some people can't afford. I I chose to not rollerblade in place of skating some shit. I would rather have strapped bricks to my feet and figured that shit out. At least I gained some goddamn leg strength and be sexy as hell afterwards. <laughs> this skate just causing me problems and shame. You know, and it's so, it's interesting because I, I and others kept encouraging a, a, a fellow skater in the group to invest in a more quality pair of skates, you know, where you could change the frame, you can, you know, upgrade things on it and change your setups and maintain the same boot, you know, change the liner once it gets worn out, you know, you can customize your setup and your, and thus customize your experience with it. So... Once she finally did make that upgrade, she had this epiphany like everybody else did. Like, oh, shit. Oh, it wasn't me. It was the skate. I tried telling you that.
so many times, like you wanting to challenge yourself to be better, but you're challenging yourself to a, a standard of people who have better equipment than you. Like, don't try to make your fucking dial up as fast as this broadband shit we got. It's not going to happen. It does not contain the capacity to provide you the service. It just can't. You can't go back on a goddamn 1995 Hewlett Packard and run fucking 2022 Photoshop programs on it. You can't even put a piece of that damn app on that computer. Stop trying to make shit work that ain't made to work that way. That skate is not made to be used the way that you are comparing yourself to other people who use better equipment. So it's not you. Oh, why my leg keep going this way? You wearing some cheap ass skates. Cheap skates. Because <laughs> I had to stop being a cheapskate because I like being a cheapskate but still managing a quality experience out of my product. But one thing I'm not going to do is commit myself to trash, like buying or purchasing trash. I don't want you to have the, the power in the market to keep reproducing that crap. No offense to the Rollerblade brand. I think my first skates were actually Rollerblade, but they were plastic. They were plastic frames. Um, and I got years of use out of them before they literally just practically destructed from the fact that I had cracked them so many times from doing so many tricks and slides and lands and slams. And I wore them out, okay? And they didn't miss any components, no screws, and nothing was missing from them joints. And I was wearing them things out. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying, I wore, them, I wore them skates out, boy. But I had such a fulfilling experience and engagement with rollerblading in that experience that it stuck with me for the rest of my life even when i wasn't skating for all that time i kept thinking about it i always would watch videos of other skaters i always wonder what happened to the sport what happened to the investment of people in skating in general but then quarantining hit us and the only thing we could do was go outside and distance ourselves from other people at the same time so it's a skate that is being allowed and it's not being overly regulated because we can be active, we could be a community, we can share one another, another one and still develop ourselves without having to be in each other's face. And if you're skating in the cold, you're going to wear a mask anyway to protect yourself uh, from the cold air coming into your lungs as you're skating. So a lot of people invested in rollerblading and, and um, quad skating for those reasons. It's very practical given the mandates that we have. Um, the ability to go outside and enjoy yourself without having to uh carry approved vaccination status and all this bullshit you can do what the fuck you want to do and maintain your your freedom without this crap so i love my big wheel but i still want to have a little bit of aggressive rage in my stride <laughs> that's what I call it. I still want to beat up the ground as I progress forward on it. You know, I still want to, when I put my foot down, I want to get a good power transfer. I want to feel like I stopped the ground the way that I intended to. So that when I jump up and I launch myself, I actually have a, the ability to propel myself. Jumping off of three wheels, when you actually get into the dynamic motion of jumping, by the time you jump, you're only on maybe one and a half wheel, maybe one and a quarter of your wheels. You have three. So giving yourself a 480 or 490 or almost any four wheel setup, uh, when you push, you have four points of contact. They're smaller than the big wheels, but that gives you more an ability to actually put some gusto in your stride. Like I said, I love the one tens. I wouldn't give them back. I would not give them back. If anything, that would have been my first purchase. But I still need the stability of a four wheel skate at a smaller size, um, but still allows me to go some distance. I got a 4100 I feel like would be too cumbersome because I do like to do tricks while I'm skating. I do like to do spins. I do like to, and, you know, I know people, there are people who do that. However, I'm not at that level of ability to get on some four by 100s, four by 110s or four by 100s. So that's 10, like I can't, I'm not at that point yet. Excuse me. So it says length also depends on the frame itself. Power slides, Trinity, and next frames move the wheel closer together and end up with a wheel base that is about the same as many 80 four wheel setups. And actually, I looked at it and it's, it's, it's about true. Um, so they did a really good job configuring the math. 
Um, you do get a lot of enjoyment out of skating on a three by one ten setup. Uh, I have a, I wear forty in European size uh, boots. Um, I feel like the one hundred was just at the cusp of being too small for my foot size and too small for the type of length of skating I wanted to do over the pavements that I wanted to do them. Um, I also found that with the three by one ten setups. I can't on, on my frames I have I can't make them asymmetrical like with one one the middle wheel forward or back I can't do that on mine and I'm very curious of the reason why you would do that so I have some windows open on Reddit concerning that so someone says why do some three wheel frames have the middle and back wheels closer together because I was wondering too they said I was looking at some three wheel frames online and noticed that some of them have the wheels evenly spaced and some have the back and middle wheels to closer get together when compared to the middle and front. So someone said, after moving from evenly spaced four by eighties to this type of offset three by one ten setup, here's what I found: you get a broader wheel base to push off from at the cost of some maneuverability. I also noticed that if I shift my weight slightly to the two back wheels, it's much easier to get light to no pressure on the front wheel, which is allowing me to interestingly gain maneuverability. Because, well, in my opinion, that middle wheel is like right in the middle of your foot. So you can spin on it so much easier compared to having two wheels further spaced out, sort of missing that middle point. It's spread out, but it's more stable. So by making it unstable, you get more ability to do, you know do these type of movements. Like I love spinning on my three by one ten setup, and I love um, making it look smooth. You know what I'm saying? Like smooth as shit. Uh, I didn't find that I could do the same thing on a 480. I felt like I was getting a lot of friction. Um, so this they say, particularly for very short bursts of slalom turns. Okay. After reviewing lots of posts here, I think it's a large, it's largely a choice based on personal preference and the style of skating you're into. For recreational skating, I haven't found the offset wheels to be an issue nor a huge benefit. Would we'll be open to hearing more from more informed opinions. Um, they said that, but I agree. I would like to also hear more about individuals who skate with a, a asymmetrical. Um, big wheel setup. So I'm going to continue reading this, however, because um, one thing I find is that some people don't actually Google. They just, yeah, I will, and they don't. So they said, cool. I always wondered that to be, be benefit of the uneven spacing. I've been cultivating as much natural rocker as I can on my evenly spaced 3110, mostly to give me lighter slalom width for downhill. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you for the response. With the wheels getting closer, is there a bigger chance of tripping over small rocks getting caught between the wheels? With more space between the wheels, be better for rough sidewalks and streets. I've only used them indoors due to the insufferable sufferable Texas summer, so I'm not the best person to ask. That being said, my knee-jerk reaction would be to wonder if your wheels were too soft or if they were grabbing rocks. That's something to think about, that if the, the wheels are too grippy, they're sort of attracting the, <laughs> the objects of your demise. So, oh, they skate on 80 to 80 wheels. And they only skate on sidewalks. And they fell down a couple of times on small rocks. But I'm going to ask, are you skating on three, one ten, and falling on small rocks? Yeah, your wheels are soft as hell. Yeah. <laughs> 82 is a little soft for outdoor. 85 is a standard, I believe. I've only been through one set, and 85 is what they came with. Yeah. Um, I'm a pair of aggressive skates, and those are about, I think, typically about 90. 90 um hardness rating the motherfuckers you can feel that shit too you can feel how hard the wheel is so a longer wheelbase equals more speed shorter equals more maneuverability longer frames also allow for slightly lower height because the wheel tends to not get in the way of the front mount hmm. the back two wheels are placed together so that you have better energy transfer with each push yeah, and that's the one thing i feel like i don't necessarily get with the three by one ten setup non-symmetrical asymmetrical so Pro well, symmetrical. Proper technique for your forest drive requires that you drive through your heel. By having the back two wheels close together, more energy is transferred to the road in an efficient manner while still giving you a slightly longer frame. Longer freeze handle better speed better than short frames. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. Somebody said they rollerbladed 503 miles, lost 40 pounds, and listened to 32 audiobooks. Go ahead. Okay. You know, it's something that helped me when it comes to aggressive skating. 
I haven't properly actually invested in it yet, but I'm learning from watching people who are at about the same level as me while also filling my mind with people who are clearly more advanced. So you can see the continuity between beginner and advanced, right? Like you see the principles of what one is doing wrong and what one is doing extremely right. And what I've noticed is that advanced skaters fuck up a lot, but it becomes sort of a piece of their, their artistic skating, their style. It becomes normal, right? Because a lot of people skate differently because they got injuries, they got bio, like biological differences, they got a bias to one side or another. So the things they do is sort of to address the, the demand of their bodies. Like someone said, oh, I noticed you do this when you're skating. I'm like, yeah, because I damn near broke my ankle and you're not going to give me advice to change that. So stop. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, mind your business. Um, I didn't ask for advice. Don't offer it. That's wisdom on both sides. Don't offer unsolicited advice. Um, don't go knocking up on people's doors, giving them shit they didn't ask for. If I come home and I find some shit that I didn't want, I'm, I'm mad. Well, I get something out of the time I didn't expect it. I'm annoyed, aggravated. But that's a person, that's personal. That's my that's my issue. But I just want to be talking about skating right now. <laughs> I want my skates right now, but I got to wait for them to come in the mail. I almost thought for a second that they weren't going to arrive because of how long it took to get the confirmation that they had um, processed the order. But it said they're coming on Thursday. And um, I really would have, wouldn't have minded just buying the boot it alone, but they said they're not doing custom orders. And removing the frame and the wheels, no, that's not necessarily a customization, but then they're, they're not at capacity right now to do anything regarding that. So regarding the sentiment of customization. So just got to take it with the three by 90 setup. Um, I saw a video of somebody utilizing it in a way that I think made sense. Because I was like, where would you use a 390 setup? But it's for slalom. I don't dedicate to slalom. I need to do a lot of shit instead of just go between cones. I think it's fun and interesting if you have the time to watch other people and really get involved and you're around other, other individuals. It's fun then, but just by myself doing slalom, like that shit bores me. No offense to nobody. What? You said it's coming today. My order coming today. We'll see. But it said it's on the vehicle. And that was at 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm excited for that. Um, A little sad as well. I excelled in meeting a lot of goals um, within my skating faster than I expected to. And I'm disappointed because I had a plan in mind, and now I don't do it. But just wait for the ring into the next class. If I had a time frame in mind to achieve something in three months, I want to stick to three months. <laughs> I don't want more or less time than that, because now I'm gonna have to figure out what to do in place of, you know, that extra month I have. So one of the things I'm doing is continuing to engage and to even just be aware of um, the community. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, of the community of skating and getting involved in helping other people sort of address their fears and learn how to counter it. I just find that if you don't have certain personality traits, I don't know how to work with you, work with individuals. And that's why I sometimes shy away from certain positions. Because I feel like if I'm going to be a disservice to certain people, I'm not afraid to tell you no. I'm not afraid to tell you to get the fuck out of my face. I'm not afraid to let you down. I hope I do. In fact, I hope I do disappoint you so that you gain independence away from calling me for all the fucking shit. I apologize. Um, but I just feel like we have too many resources that are abundantly available to us and are vast to treat someone so remediate and treat someone like they don't have the ability to learn the things that I learned. I don't expect them to learn it in the time that I learn it, but I do have an expectation that the next time we meet, you talk about something you did on your own as far as your learning or your discipline. And if I notice as a trend or a pattern that you are not returning, you're not giving yourself any contribution and that you are relying on me for your lessonhood or for your skating, you know, development, I'm not interested. I am not interested. And once I progress, I can't go back 
you know, it's like, why would I go back to the first grade unless I have some type of brain injury that requires me to go back to that level of learning? Not, not to say it's not good to brush up, however, I obviously can afford to brush up on fundamentals and basics when it comes to education. However, we're talking about rollerblading, which requires a physical intelligence and physical abilities or physical adaptations. Um, and I just tend to struggle with people who struggle with physical learning, mind, body, connection, and learning. Because it, once I figured out how to stand up on some inline skates, I never not knew how to stand on inline skates. So when people go, how do you stand on skates? I'm like, what kind of question is that? It's like asking somebody how to walk. You literally need to review a lot of different information and books. Review a lot of material, make your own material, do your own studies, do your own research and have your own experiences in order to actually articulate that. I can articulate it in my body by using a physical demonstration, but for myself speaking personally, I don't know how to direct you on how to stand up and walk if you have not figured out some of the most basic fundamental and principles regarding how to walk. At the very least, learn how to mimic. If you don't know how to, that's something I learned to do um, that helps. I struggle with a lot of things. Um, but what I learned most is how to mimic, mimic a movement, mimic a sound, mimic, uh, perception, mim you know, being someone else's shoes, um, that's an extension of empathy, but also having the space mentally and emotionally to do it. Sometimes I don't have the space to visualize that strongly. Other times I can literally feel it in my body. And the moment I feel it in my body, I know I'm gonna get it down about two or three attempts. You know, with the right explanation, I could do a lot of things, but I'm just saying I'm not the person to provide those explanations. So that being said, like I said, I reached certain goals faster than I thought to. Now I'm already moving out of certain spaces and communities and um, activities within skating that I was enjoying. But in order to continue to enjoy it, I have to progress and I have to move out from where I began. So that means I'm going to put, expose myself to new risks. It means I'm going to expose myself to new cultural norms regarding skating because I'm used to people who are more in the middle. You know, they, they really are enthusiastic about rollerblading, but they're not like professional speed skaters or professional aggressive skaters or professional uh, slalom skaters or professional anything. They just really are enthusiastic about getting outside and rollerblading. Both of those two parts, getting outside and rollerblading. Um, these individuals typically do not rely on roller rinks or controlled spaces. They like the dynamic arena that is urban skating or that is outdoor skating. Um, they like the ability to move, move to different locations. Um, they love the ability to invite fun to other people's lives from the art that is skating at times. Some people is literally just weight loss. I'm not on, I'm never on a weight loss journey ever. I'm on a weight gain and weight maintenance journey. Okay. So I don't tend to mesh well on the subject of skating because weight loss skaters tend to be more concerned with their, their comfort in a skate than they are the actual performance of the boot. They don't care. They want to get outside and work. Um, I want to work a little bit and I want to work when I choose on my skates. I don't want to be working through every stride. So I'm not going to go out on a, a trail skate with an aggressive skate on. You know, some people do that and that's for the challenge and the enjoyment that they have in themselves. Um, I don't like to do things like that, you know? So I think it's good to really, really review what you want. Make a list, check it twice. Make a list, what do I want to get out of skating? Do I want to get to a heart rate? Do I want to get to a certain amount of reps? Do I want to do distance? Do I want to do aggressive? Do I want to do urban? Do I want to do assault? And so I'm reading all these blogs and entries on the different types of styles of skating, right? I never heard of slalom. I just thought it was fancy dance. <laughs> you know, I just thought it was, you know, technical skating. Um, I didn't know that it actually had a word. And so when I kept hearing people in videos from a slalom, especially like the French skaters, um, particularly, uh, you probably know that if you've looked at any of these videos, I figured his name, I was just watching this video, it's actually open right here because he did a live stream and it surprised everyone, Tiago. He has 77,000 subscribers. He is a Frenchman. Um, he has different concerns than I have, just based on the fact that his foot is a different size than mine. 
his body mass changes the decisions he makes about the skates, construction, quality, design, materials, uh, buckles, measurement, so on and so forth, you know, because his weight dis distribution is going to be different from mine. I have more mass in my upper body than he appears to have in his entire body. I'm not going to compare my skate journey to other people's journeys, but I am going to hold them together so that I can see similarities and 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 um, contrasts, so that the decision I make is mine. Read, 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 read. Watch videos, listen to people talk. Um, I saw someone saying they were blind and seeking assistance with skating. I would love to do that. Be a part of that group. Um, However, I also was hesitant to answer any inquiry. I'm not trained. I'm not professional. Um, I'm just an enthusiastic individual. And someone said they were rollerblading while blind. That's a lot of responsibility that you have over this person's skating and navigating the terrain. I already don't do well with people who can see. You know, I'm going to go at my speed. I'm going to skate my speed unless I see that, you know, there's a safety concern with you being in the back by yourself unattended as a beginner skater or someone who might have uh, uh, an injury or someone who might have a, a defect in their skate or the skate has not been secured and I can see it. Then I'll skate next to you at your speed. I'll keep an eye on you. I'll tell somebody in the group, you know, one of the ma what, masters, one of the leaders in the group. Master is not a bad word. Um, one of the skate masters, <laughs> I'll tell somebody where I'll keep my eye on you personally. Um, but for the most part, especially now that I want to progress to even another level in my journey, especially since I knocked a lot of, um, I knocked a lot off my bucket list very quickly. Um, I, I want to, I don't want to sit here waiting on people to show up to stuff that they're not even interested in and invested in. You know, find your people is absolutely a recommendation I will also make if you have that uh, that ability. And if you can't find them, attract them. Um, if you can't do that, then maybe you find peace or whatever you're doing. But, you know, it required, you gotta be, you gotta be bold. You gotta be, you gotta be wiser. You gotta do it. You gotta grow. Um, and one of the ways I intend to grow is to continue to grow myself and then eventually I want to continue to assist others with growing as well in this direction. You know, but if you want somebody got soft bones, you, you don't have resilience, build it up. Don't beat yourself up. All of us get like you might be looking at us going, oh they're so perfect. Oh, they're so good. Oh my God, I want to go like that. Oh my God, stop stop idolizing. Don't idolize none of us. We fuck up all the time. We're in pain when we do some of the shit we do, but we love it so much we put ourselves through the pain. Cause I'd rather have the pain in doing it than not. You know, professional skaters who get paid to do this shit are sparks and own their own skate companies fuck up. What make you think the people you skate with on the street not gonna fuck up? Stop beating yourself up for failures. That's normal. It's normal to fall. Bitch, I can't walk without bumping into something, though I look right at it. I just look good when I do it. And when I do fall, I get up happy that I fell because when I'm falling, I'm learning. Oh, okay. And it's a lot more dynamic. It's like, you got to learn a lot very quickly. How the hell do I fall without hurting myself? Oh yeah. Roll a little bit, you know, roll, roll that. <laughs> you know, you got to be aware of yourself. Like, well, I'm not wearing my pads today. I shouldn't do this trick because the risk is not worth it. And oftentimes I don't do certain things because I know if I take that pain, I'm not going to be able to skate comfortably for another week or month. I'm not the child I used to be where I used to throw my body into situations and I slide about 15 feet and get up and do it again. Baby, if I slide one foot while standing, I don't pull the muscle. I don't pull the muscle. I hurt my knees sitting and squatting, but I can roll a blade. My knees still hurt. I was just saying on my Instagram, stop idolizing people and thinking the perfection of them. Like I still hurt. I still have back pain. Hell, skating add to it. I, but I'd rather do it than not. You know, so all this, oh, well, I don't want to end this, and I'm scared of this and scared of this. What do you really want? Do you want your fear or do you want your enjoyment? Do you want your captivity or do you want your freedom? Because eventually you're going to have to shut up with that narrative about what you're afraid of and take a step. Like the first time I, I had to learn to float in a pool and I learned I couldn't because I was so lean. My body weight, my the way my body was composed and my 
my low body fat, I could not float in the water. And it was scary as hell to continually learn that. I listened to multiple instructors. And what I found over time was many instructors sitting down to review, you know, their clients and their, 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 their students. And they said a lot of their black students are the leanest of all their students and they tend to sink. They tend to just to the bottom of the pool. And I used to do that. I used to sit at the bottom of the pool like a fucking rock. And I'd be like, why am I not floating? Even if I do this, I do that, I do that. I, I would just literally just sink to the bottom and sit there while everybody else is propelling themselves to sit. I'm literally just sitting at the bottom of the fucking pool watching people. And I did it over and over and over again where people didn't even know I was at the pool anymore. Because, bitch, I just kept sinking to where I said, bitch, I'm just about to have fun down here at the bottom. So I'm at the bottom of the pool swimming like a fucking dolphin. <laughs> I got older. I gained a little body fat, mostly here. These are my flotation devices. I'm just telling you. Um, now I have this. I have flotation devices. And as long as these stay in the water, I have some hope. <laughs> but for the most part, I don't, I don't fucking float. But I have a little more float now that I have these. Um, and that's just a biological fact about me where somebody else can just without trying. Um, so stop comparing, stop lamenting, and work it out. You that frustrated with your skating? Work it out, figure it out, be constructive about it. Like, but all of us, we don't like to see people that hard on themselves. We skate so we can escape that hardness. You know what I'm saying? Like you put on a hard boot with soft wheels so you can navigate all these bumps and all this, all this obstacle all these obstacles in your environment and in yourself stop being so hard on yourself about your skate development the reason i excelled in skating is not the reason why you're going to excel i know how i learn i spend a lot of time investing in how to learn at my best ability but i pay for it in other areas of my life that you aren't paying stop coveting stop idolizing don't idolize someone else's skate success and put that in place of your own ability. Because once you realize what you're capable of, you're going to be wondering why you're so amazed with everybody else. Why did I like his skating so much? Why was I there? Why did I? Why was I such a fan of this or that? I could do my own. Yeah. Yeah. If I had all the time and the energy in the world to do everything I aspire to do and be capable of doing, I wouldn't buy nothing from no motherfucking body ever. Everything would be my own or at the least commissioned at my request. I just wouldn't make investments into other, body, other people's stuff because like, it's weird to me to buy stuff off the rack. I do it, but I think it's weird. And I think it's weird because consumerism is still new. Yeah, there's markets, there's exchange, there's service, there's industry. But consume, mass consumerism is still pretty new and there are even still places and people and societies that have yet to experience that and might never experience it. So it was very strange to me, you know, to pull something off the rack, to pull something stock, to pull something without any customization, without personalization, and leave it that way. Nothing, especially my technological devices, everything gets modified to, and tailored to how I want to use it. Some people's phones are so default, any and everybody can access everything and know where everything is because they never moved it from the time it was installed on the phone from the factory. I'm not that person. I'm not a factory setting person. So you probably can't pick up my D uh, DSLRs and use them because I didn't change all the programming. You probably are not going to enjoy using my stuff because how much I personalize it, personalize. Um, some stuff I don't mind, but other things I'm like, this doesn't even make sense. Why would I, you know, why would I go for the lesser of my options? And when I went for the Zedra Blade 4x80, that's what I did. I went for the lesser of my options. The market has so much more to afford you than the first impulse buy in order to satisfy something that's not going to satisfy. You went for five inches and you know you good with seven and a half. I said that. You know you want a full course meal and you went for a fucking appetite. An appetizer. That's how I talked to myself. Like, I was like, why did you do that? Like, I was so upset. I am still upset. I literally kept them skates just so I could remember not to do anything like that again. You know, sometimes you luck up and you get something good for less. This is not one of those cases. 
you know, some some things. The only thing I probably skimp on at this point in rollerblading is maybe the laces. And from my reading, apparently the laces even can have a huge and profound impact on your skating enjoyment. I never would have thought about that if I didn't listen to other people complain and find solutions. So I was seeing, you know, seeing stuff like that. Why is it important to even be curious of the shoe, the, the laces that go on the skate? You know, I learned how to look at the skates and assume if it would fit my foot based on looking at it, right? You know, so now I can look at certain skates and go, that's too narrow. You know, I can look at certain skates and go, mm, that's too wide. You know, I can look at certain skates and go, that's going to crush my arch. You know, because I've gained a lot of knowledge about myself in this process while learning from others. So, you know, don't sit in that state of being awed and idolizing others' abilities because you block yourself from actually uh, accessing your own. You spend so much time enjoying everybody else and praising everybody else, you don't get to your own diligence. And I really encourage these things. Um, and I really look for these types of improvements because, you know, even in like the coaching I've done in my life, I will resign from coaching a, a person if I find that they're just, we're not the same speed or, you know, we can't even loosely stay together, you know, where I'm 10, 15 miles ahead of you, you know, mentally or emotionally. And I'm hindering you because I'm putting you within a complex that expects you to operate faster than what you really should be. Um, and so that's just self-knowledge and awareness that says, you know, maybe I'm not an emergency operational surgical doctor, but I do emer I do uh operation, you know, I do operational surgeries, just not emergency. Cause I can't be I can't do the on call lifestyle. You know, or maybe the people whom I sought to serve do not require me to be on call for those things. And it does benefit them and myself to maintain a schedule for these types of things. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, people who went into cosmetic surgery for you know the advancement, the pure sake of the advancement in other people. I've seen uh, doctors learn certain techniques because they have the mental capacity, not because they desire or they agree with the technique, but because they have the ability to teach a lot of people very easily, very quickly, and they're very proficient. Do you at all times? Do you? All right. So I probably am not going to stop talking because I'm trying to establish something larger in the bigger picture. The more I run my mouth here, the more I have materials to clip from later on so that I can actually talk to you in a very productive manner. But I'm also the type of person where I leave videos on in the background while I do other things. So I expect sometimes other people to be the same way. And I'm going to operate in a manner that appeases me over what you might expect or believe you have the ability to dictate. Y'all pay good money to go here. Y'all pay good money to go hear comedians say offensive stuff, but when I do it for free, I get reported. <laughs> that was a great joke. I wasn't excited that. Oh my god. I'm not gonna say it out loud, um, but that's funny. Um also, if you haven't already, join Black Sim groups, join Black anime groups, join Black skate groups, join Black skate organizations, join Black everything. It don't hurt. They're not all uh, limited to Black people that they do try to manage the numbers so that Black people have access and representation in the space because it's easy to overwhelm the space with the majority. Um, and the fact is, a lot of people in America are, are living with some form of disability and a lot of spaces don't like to accommodate those things despite that being the rea reality of many um and so despite the fact that my life continues to go into an extremely able body direction i do constantly think about you know what it means to slow down what it means to service community what it means to perform multiple functions but i have to be real myself and say i have to follow my passion and that's a part of my mental health that's a part of my physical health um, so being a part of this sort of neurodivergent community, I have to stick to my details and uh, pray that you don't get offended. And if you do, I don't give a fuck. I mean, in the most friendliest way possible. Um, only if we enemies, we can't talk like that and be real or honest with each other and understand it ain't made for you to be offended by. That being said, I'm going to warm up my sandwich one more time, warm my coffee one more time, continue to 
taking the materials of where I'm trying to go towards. I'm going to finish this fucking website in one guy on go. Because I had a plan for it and I didn't like it. And I should communicate that more. I do this sometimes where I don't, because I don't like it. I don't want to present it. I go for that perfectionism. But if I just communicate it, it would be okay. So, because I was going, I was trying to go with the direction. I said, that is not feeling right. Something don't feel right. I think I'm operating on a stereotype of expectation versus the reality of the possibilities that we should work with and mess around with. So I'm going to see if I can schedule some time with this individual. Um, but all that said and done is none of your business. I'm about to go tend to myself, my family, my peers, my my scenery. I appreciate you and I wish and pray for everybody that you have wealth, uh, warmness, safety, and that you take account of it every day and that you understand that you are blessed and that you are reaping and you are sowing simultaneously and you are beautiful and you are loved and that you are a loving person that you give a lot to a lot of other individuals and it's okay to give to yourself. Anybody offended with you taking care of yourself need to check with themselves what the fuck wrong with them. It's okay that sometimes you are that person who needs to check what the fuck is wrong with you. It's okay. Just make sure you do it. And it's okay. It's okay. Bitch, love you.